Hello. Now, we're going to continue our work in revising our algebra from junior cycle, and we're going to start out by multiplying out our two brackets in the top left-hand corner here. So we know that we're going to take the first term in the first bracket and multiply it by the second bracket, the second term in the first bracket and multiply it by the second bracket, just as we did before. I'll have 2x on 2x plus 1, minus 3 on 2x plus 3, I think I said plus 1 a moment ago, which will give me 4x squared plus 6x minus 6x minus 9. And I add up my like terms, I can see that I have a plus 6x and a minus 6x, and I end up with 4x squared minus 9. So something funny has happened here, my x terms have summed to 0. So let's go back to my original question and see if I can spot what's going on here. I have 2x minus 3 multiplied by 2x plus 3. Let's do a parallel thing here. I have a minus b multiplied by a plus b. It wouldn't matter which came first. a minus b multiplied by a plus b is the same as a plus b multiplied by a minus b. And I recognize this pattern from my work in the junior cycle. It's what we would sometimes call dots, or difference of two squares. So dots is our nickname for er, difference of two squares, and we know that it ends up being a squared minus b squared when we multiply out these two brackets. And we know that that's an important pattern to have in the back of our minds whenever we're doing algebra. And just to ooh, clarify, 4 is 2 squared, so I would end up with 2x all squared minus 3 all squared, which is my a squared minus b squared, a and b. So that is my a pattern for difference of two squares, and it is an extremely important pattern to be able to spot. There have been questions that have come up over the years in the Leaving Cert, which would be virtually impossible to get full marks on if you did not recognize a uh, difference of two squares as something that helped you with factorizing. So it is extremely important anytime we see a squared term or a perfect square and then a minus sign, instantly we should be thinking, is this dots? Is this difference of two squares? And can I use that fact to help me in this problem? Now, the other thing we want to talk about today is connected with factorizing and it is division. So if I take my problem here, I have 3x cubed minus 21x all divided by 3x. What jumps out to me immediately here is I have a common factor in my, I have a common factor on my top line. So when I spot a common factor, even if I don't have any reason to, I'm often just going to factorize it because most of the time it's going to be useful to me to do so. So I'll end up with x squared minus 7 over 3x. And now I can see I have a common factor top and bottom, and I can divide above and below. I'm able to do this, I'm able to divide above and below by the same number and not change my fraction. And I'm left with x squared minus 7. Another way of writing that problem, which is perfectly valid and is from time to time the more useful way to write it, would be to break up my fraction into two pieces. I could have 3x cubed all over 3x minus 21x all over 3x and then do my division out separately. And there will be times when that will be more useful as a method. So that's my first type of division. And any time I can, I'm looking for a common factor. Our phrase, our rhyme, common factor comes first, is something that we will often have rolling around in the back of our minds. Common factor comes first. Any time we're doing factorization, I'm looking for what is a common factor to a line or if I can spot a common factor immediately that's common to everything top and bottom in a fraction, I'm looking for those patterns. That's what's getting me my marks in these types of questions, being able to spot 
my patterns. Likewise, if I see a situation here, several things jump out at me. Here, I've got a common factor of two on my bottom line. I don't have a common factor on the top line, however, but I do know my dots and I recognize them here. So I have difference of two squares here because I have an x squared minus and nine is a perfect square. So I have x squared minus three squared on the top and I have a common factor of two that I can take out here and I am left with x minus three. And I know the difference of two squares is useful because it allows me to factorize to x plus three multiplied by x minus three. I'm deliberately doing this the opposite way around how I wrote it earlier. It does not matter which one you write first, whether it's x plus three or x minus three first. All that matters is you end up with x plus three multiplied by x minus three in either order, and you can see it in either order in questions. Now what I can see is that I have a common bracket top and bottom. Everything on the top line is multiplied by x minus three by this bracket x minus three. Everything on the bottom line is multiplied by x minus three as well. That means I can divide above and below by x minus three and I'm left with x plus three divided by two as my final answer. There's nothing more I can simplify there without further information. So that is another type of factorizing. And again, looking for common factors, looking for patterns like dots, difference of two squares, extremely important for simplifying problems at higher level. Now, this will presumably be familiar to some of you. This is going to be long division. But just to remind you that this is just division, I'm going to write it out like a normal division sum as well. So you can see the question written as this. Where you're asked to divide something, it should be in brackets as well, you're asked to divide this expression by this expression. You can also see it as a fraction because fractions are about division. And we can also write it in terms of long division, which is how we're actually going to do this problem. And if we remember, we need to have a progression of powers. So this is x cubed and this is x. We're skipping a power, we're skipping x squared. We don't want to do that in long division because it can make life confusing. So I'm going to put in plus zero x squared here because it makes it easier to follow my steps. Technically that step is not required, but attempting to do this without putting in zero x squared can be very challenging unless you're very confident with algebra. So remembering to put in a zero x squared or a zero x if you're missing a term in your progression uh, and by progression i mean x cubed then x squared then x then number uh, putting that in can be very helpful so that you don't make a mistake and let's see if we can remember what are our steps in long division we want to divide then multiply then subtract and then bring down dad mother sister brother if you prefer to remember it that way, but divide, multiply, subtract, and bring down is about as easy to remember for lots of people. So let's follow through our steps. We're gonna have x divides into x cubed, x squared times. That's our division part. The highest power in what we're dividing in gets divided into the highest power in our uh, expression that we're dividing. Next step is multiply. We're gonna multiply x squared by each of these terms and write them underneath here. So x squared multiplied by x is x cubed. x squared multiplied by five is five x squared. Next step is subtract. So we're going to subtract, which effectively means change the signs of uh, what I am taking away here. So that ends up with x cubed minus x cubed is zero and zero x squared minus five x squared is minus five x squared. Final step is bring down minus 22 x. And then we restart the whole process over again. Divide in means x divides into minus five x squared minus five x times. Multiply minus five x by a x is minus 5x squared minus 5x by 
5 is going to give me minus 25x. Subtract means effectively change the signs, because if I'm subtracting a negative, it's the same as adding. Subtracting a negative is the same as adding. So minus minus 25 is the same thing as plus 25. So I get 0, and I end up with plus 3x, and bring down plus Pardon, I've mis uh, miswritten that question. That should be 15. So bring down my 15. So again, if you're for your notes, that should have been a 15 up there. Now, final step, uh, x divides into u plus 3x plus 3 times. Uh, and then multiply, 3 multiplied by x is 3x, 3 multiplied by 5 is 15, and subtract, and I get 0, 0. Now that tells me, and this is going to be important for how we use long division as we move on in this chapter and beyond, the fact that I got 0, 0 there, the fact that I got no remainder in my long division, tells me that x plus 5 is a factor it divides in perfectly into my original expression, into my a, x cubed minus 22x plus 15. So, if this divides in without a remainder, if I get 0, 0 when I do this subtraction here, that means that x plus 5 is a factor. It also means that x squared minus 5x plus 3 is a factor. So if I multiply my factors together, I should get, or I must get, the original expression. So I must get this original expression. And I want to highlight again to you something that I've mentioned to you before. If I multiply the first term in the first bracket by the first term in the second bracket, I get the first term in my final answer. And if I multiply the last term in my first bracket by the last term in my second bracket, I get the last term in my final answer. This will be important later on, and it's a tool that we can use for solving problems. So our long division is going to help us a lot with factors and identities and business that we're going to come to shortly. So we can remember these different things that if we get zero, zero down here, it means x plus five is a remainder. The corollary to that is if x plus 5 is definitively a factor of this expression, that means that we know we must get 0, 0 as a final answer for our sum down here. That's how we're going to use it later on. And we also remember this fact that the first term by the first term will give the first term in the answer. The first, last term multiplied by the last term will give the last term in my final answer. This, again, will be important later on in the chapter. So we have lots to work with in our revision of our ideas from junior cycle with a little bit of a higher level leaving cert twist to some of them.